This is the Create Your Own Life show, where we interview people that are world-class performers, from Super Bowl champions to New York Times bestsellers to billionaires. We figure out what makes them tick and unpack it for you to do the same. I'm Jeremy Ryan Slate, and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we help you to create your own life. What is up, everybody? It's Monday, the 7th of December, 2020, and this is the Create Your Own Life show. So guys, I have a brand new video set up today. So if you're seeing this on YouTube, it's a little bit different. We're playing with the light. We're playing with the camera work. So uh, this may not be the finished version of it, but it's kind of the version we have now. And I'm super excited to be hanging out with you guys on a really awesome Monday. Um, If you are watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button below, hit the little bell so you don't miss another new episode. If you are watching, listening to this on the podcast version, uh, make sure you subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or uh, wherever else you're listening to us. And while you're over there, do me a favor and leave us a rating and review because that's what helps more people to find out about us and helps us to make a bigger impact in this world. As you guys know, I have a, a huge goal to make a massive impact. And today's episode, I think, is really going to make a big impact. As you remember, last Wednesday, I had John Spagnola on this show, and we talked about a lot of what's been going on with mental illness and suicide with our military, and I'm really, really excited for the guest I have for you guys today because you heard John reference him in that episode, but we're actually going to get into the science of things today as we have Dr. Mark Gordon with us, and he's an expert in traumatic brain injury or TBI, and we're going to be taking a look at how a lot of what's classified as mental illness happens to be what's going on with brain inflammation by traumatic brain injury. And these are things that can actually be reversed according to Dr. Gordon. You know, I'm not the scientist and doctor here. He is. And I really want to dive into a lot of that information today because this is something that I think can help a ton of people um, because there's a lot of natural ways to reverse a lot of what's been called completely irreversible. And I think this is another great option for our military rather than you know the psychiatric drugging that's been going on for them and we're going to get into a lot of different things here we're going to talk about um we're going to talk about ptsd with the military and how dr gordon has worked with that we're also going to be talking a lot about the nfl and we get into a little bit of aaron hernandez's story too if you guys are familiar with the former patriots tight end and dr gordon's opinion on that which actually really surprised me so i'm excited to share that with you guys Um, But before we jump into this episode, I just want to quickly tell you guys about today's sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Audible, and Audible is offering all of your kind people a free month of their service and a free audiobook download. Uh, Right now, I picked up Built to Sell. Uh, It was recommended to me by future Create Your Own Life guest, Mike RC. So if you want to pick up that book or any other book for free, courtesy of Audible, just head over to jeremyryanslate.com slash book. That is jeremyryanslate.com slash book. All right, everyone, without further ado, let's get into this interview with Dr. Mark Gordon. Hey, everyone, Jeremy here, and I'm really, really excited for this episode today because as we talked about in an earlier episode uh, with John Spagnola, a lot of what's going on you know, with our military, there's really a better way to take a look at this. And he had mentioned uh, Dr. Mark Gordon and a lot of the work he's doing with traumatic brain injuries. So I'm very lucky to welcome Dr. Gordon today. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today, Dr. Gordon. Hey, it's my pleasure, Jeremy. Absolutely. So I, I wanted to kind of start, I guess, first and foremost um, with, you know, I've heard some credible things, uh, incredible things from, from John about what you do. I guess from, from your viewpoint, like, how did you end up in the area of traumatic brain injury? Like, how did you decide that was the area you want to help? Well, you know, if you have a slip and fall and cut your knee, you now become the expert in slipping and falling and cutting your knee. Well, I had six head traumas throughout my adolescent childhood. Oh, my gosh. Adulthood. And it generated for me um, a lot of the symptomatology that we're now ascribing to post-traumatic stress disorder. But I didn't have any post-traumatic stress. What I did Mm. have were head traumas. And it turns out that if you look closely at the chemistry of what happens to the brain, is that when you do have things like uh, traumatic brain injury, whether or not it's a blast trauma or repetitive gunfire from the 50 cal or someone shooting off a Gustav or whatever kind of armament that you might have a uh, kickback with the uh, blast trauma, 
um, it creates a chemical change in the brain that's inflammation. And that inflammation is what interrupts a lot of the pathways in the brain that regulate our mental capacity, our cognition, memory recall, as well as influences our uh, mood. Mm. I mean, a lot of people out there have, you know, maybe had a little bit too much to drink, go to bed, and they wake up in the morning very irritable and light sensitive and kind of like skittish. That's all inflammation from the alcohol's effect on the brain, a damaging effect. That's so, interesting. Yeah. So this is, you know, having had six head traumas and then becoming depressed in the 90s. And then my escape was reading. And in the course of reading, I came across this relationship that I started putting together and went and had my blood work done for hormones and inflammatory markers and boom, had it replaced. There were three hormones, growth hormone, testosterone, and thyroid, and had them replaced in 90 days, totally different, you know, different outlook on life. And through the course of time, 2004 from late nineties, 97 ish to 2004 was just, you know, reveling in my improvement and mental capacity and calmer having three daughters, you have to be really calm. Okay? I, I only have one right now, too. So I'm still learning that. <laughs> I've got three. Call me up. I'll give you some pointers. Or I'll talk to the we, daughters. We, we have another one on the way. And I don't know if it's a daughter yet. So <laughs> okay, fine. Well, sneak an ultrasound in. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, the in 2004, when my transition from traditional medicine into this area of um, trauma and, uh, and uh, neuroendocrinology, the chemistry of the brain, the neuro, uh, the endocrinology of the brain, and it's more mm -hmm. than that, it's, it's what alters the process of making the hormones in the brain. It's, you know, we say, oh, genetics, it could be medication, it could be trauma. Well, inflammation just disrupts the entire chemistry, the molecular chemistry of the brain so that you cannot put two areas of the brain together to give you stability or the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe or the back of the, for the vision and recognition of stuff on the parietal temporal lobes. So by getting rid of the inflammation and hormones, you know, everybody, you know, focuses on the hormones, the hormones are more than just reproduction or you know, gender or sex hormones, they have mm -hmm. secondary benefits we call pleiotropic. And what they do is they stop inflammation. Uh, one of the major ones is testosterone. Testosterone lowers inflammation and increases the immune system. Estrogen does the same thing. But we totally negate that because we say, oh, testosterone will cause you to be, you know, a bodybuilder and to be, you know, abusive and to have roid rage. That's malarkey. If you treat with the physiological dosings, you get all the benefits. I agree. Too high, too much problems. Mm -hmm. So everything is about keeping it within a physiological range. It's like an equilibrium, I guess you could say in a lot of ways. You got it. It's a biochemical equilibrium. It's like the analogy I use quite often is it's like having a car with four flat tires and you get to choose which one you want to fill up representing a lot of the... Uh, uh, healthcare providers out there are using testosterone solely, but that's only one of the tires. You have to fill up all four tires balanced so you drive through life nice and level-minded and level. So I, the thing that, that's really catching my attention here is you, you mentioned like a lot of the, the, the physiological things that were going on. Like you mentioned, you know, the mood swings, the irritability, the stuff like that. And, and I feel like a lot of people, when they see that, they attribute that to like mental illness or something like that. And you're, so I, I guess- how did you discover that it was actually inflammation causing that? Like, like, I guess, what made you check there? Well, the literature, there is an incredible amount of literature that isn't center stage in the traditional medical communities that we deal in because they, they counter a lot of the philosophies that we have. Mm -hmm. Like the most important one that, I, that is at the core of what we do is that inflammation leads to neuropsychiatric illnesses, which might include depression, bipolar, obsessive compulsion, um, ALS, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, schizophrenia, all these have documented inflammation and associated with it is a reduction in hormones that help to keep the inflammation down. Mm -hmm. So these, uh, these articles are contrary to the core that says, oh, you're depressed, take an antidepressant. 
Mm -hmm. You're anxious, take an anti-anxiety. And what do these drugs do? Well, in looking at how the mechanisms really work, like the antidepressants, they help to drop inflammation in one cell, a one cell type in the brain called microglia or the M1 cells, um, which become inflammatory cells that start dumping something you've heard of before called cytokines. Mm -hmm. It turns out that COVID or any viral infection stimulates the body to produce inflammatory cytokines, your cytokine storm, you know, cytokine dumping. Head trauma does the same thing. Stress does the same thing. So you can have a multitude of causative factors leading down the same pathway. You know, they say uh, all roads lead to Rome. Well, mm -hmm. what happens is there are a whole bunch of ways that you can get uh, these cytokines produced to create damage. One of the greatest um, this discoveries in the past, within the past 10 years is a chemical in the brain, which is called chemokine or uh, fractalkin. Mm -hmm. And fractalkin is responsible for controlling inflammation in the brain. And when does this fractalkin disappear? Under stress. Mm -hmm. So I can have a person who has 100% stress, no physical trauma, no blast trauma, nothing but is under chronic stress for whatever the situation might be. And they'll develop the same problems as we've been ascribing to PTSD. Wow. Yeah. Fractal can look it up. It's or else I'll send you my binder full of these articles. Unbelievable. So what's happening is a lot of these articles are coming out, but no one's reading it. Mm. I like reading this research. I like reading what research and it, you know, when is research no longer research, but something you can apply in a clinical setting. And what I do is called translational medicine, which is I look at all this science that's been done 10, 15, 20, 30 articles talking about the same concept. And then I apply it in my clinical practice to say, okay, on the bench, you know, which is the research from bench to bed. So the bed is my clinical practice. That's from bench to bed. So we try it out over the past 16, almost 20 years now, and we see the things that work according to how it's been reported. And those are the things we go with. So we have, you know, products which we've developed over the past 16 to 20 years, which address this inflammation. And we have studies right now going on with the Marines. Um, we will have it with SEAL team um, by the end of this month. I was just talking with the commander this morning, and um, it's because they've seen in their colleagues who have come into our program mm -hmm. the improvement. We have uh, over 368 military veterans and retired, uh, veterans and active duty, and about 2,800 civilians. Mm. And so we have a lot of documentation over the past almost 20 years of what we've been working on. Most important is that you first define the issue. How you define it is we developed a, a laboratory testing panel called the biomarkers panel, where it has 28 points. And those 28 points are all interrelated. And so you cannot look at one line and say what's going on. You need to look at multiple lines and associate them together. So my background was in uh, computer electronics. My father had bone cancer and died. That's what led me into medicine. And I kept my finger in the computer area. And um, I've written with the help of a phenomenal programmer, Sam, um, a program which analyzes the labs on multi-tiers mm -hmm. and also integrates into it medications that a person might be on because certain medications influence our hormones that are generated in our brain. So we have to be aware of that. Well, this, this kind of brings up a few different questions, Dr. Gordon. I, I, I feel like we might run out of time here. Um, so I guess the first one, you know, being you mentioned, um, I, I guess to kind of set this up with a story, um, are you familiar with the story of Alex Smith, the former quarterback for, well, the current quarterback now for, for Washington? He had a spiral fracture a couple of years ago. He didn't play for two years. And he did a lot of his recovery in a military hospital. And they're saying, hey, you know, this is actually more similar to a military injury than a football injury. And I guess even looking at that, like head injuries in football. It, it would seem to me that you, you're probably seeing a lot of similar things that you're seeing with, with servicemen. And the thing they keep talking about in the news is this, this CTE, this, uh, this uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. encephalopathy. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, you got and, it. And, and I, I guess like looking at that, is that a type of inflammation or how does that connect to kind of what, what we're talking about well, here? 
it is a type of inflammation. Before I started working in 2009 with the military, prior to that, I was working with the NFL, with the Got retirees. It. So I did two ESPN outside the line. You go on my website and see it with football players and with pugilists and so forth, because they were experiencing, that was my first real exposure was in the sports wheel world where they were developing everything you were talking about. Well, CTE, and you said it perfectly correctly. <laughs> I'm, pr is, I'm proud of myself on that one. <laughs> yeah, you should yeah, pat yourself on the back. Okay. <laughs> so uh, CTE is an inflammatory process, okay? Um, uh, Bennett Omalu from concussion is in Lodi, California. We've uh, chatted a number of times. And CTE is a label, mm -hmm. just like PTSD is a label, just like T, uh, you know, TBI or uh, MTBI or NTBI, whatever letters you want to put together, they're all labels. And I, I'm not really, I'm not really uh, happy with all the labels because they now distract us and towards looking at these labels. And now we've got this gestalt, this global kind of impression just by using the word CTE that it should right. be this way or that way. Well, what's common in CTE as well as in uh, blast trauma with uh, Dr. Daniel Pearl out of uh, Bethesda, Maryland. Brilliant guy. I had the honor of uh, meeting and lecturing with him in uh, London January this year. And he really, really defined it in over 20,000 brain samples where he found people, uh, military, that had died, either suicide or died um, from their injuries. Um, they were all labeled with PTSD. Mm. What he found in every single one of them were lesions, were damage to the brain material and he said brilliant statement was how can you call a psychiatric problem when you find physical findings okay mm -hmm. it's like you fall and break your leg and i'm telling you it's all psychiatric right oh you've got a physical finding that you really broke your leg and dr omayu uh basically uh with cte he also found the disruption of the tissue in the brain similar to what Dr. Daniel Pearl had been seeing. So these two, they're the same thing, but we've given it a different name. So in the military, it's called one thing. In the sports world, it's called another. The mm -hmm. symptomatology that you see, you call it PTSD, PTS, PTSS. It's all the same. It's inflammatory, neuroinflammatory, you know, disease. It's inflammation. Well, that, that brings me back to something you said a couple minutes ago, and you can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong on this, because um, I because I, in 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 the, in the in the in the world of CTE, like I, the thing that stands out the most in my head, I guess, is the Junior Seau, so one of his most recent sure. ones. That when he passed away, and they you know they want to study his brain afterwards and see if there's any CTE you know present in it, and they always say about this, you know, you can only find it you know when you study the brain and things like that. But you had mentioned you have an actual test that you're able to find out if someone has inflammation now. So if, if that's true, um, I, how did you, I guess, find that? And uh, again, I'm not that smart. I read. <laughs> you know, people right. say, oh, you're the expert. I said, I'm not an expert. I'm just mm -hmm. well read. Yeah. In the literature, it talks about some inflammatory cytokines, which is like interleukin 1, 1B, 6, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. Mm -hmm. So what we did uh, the beginning of this year, a study with the new vets coming in who had all the classical parameters for being called PTSD, for me, sure. they were traumatic brain or non-traumatic brain, which is another story. And we looked at their levels and sure enough, they had levels of one or both or of all of that we were monitoring that was elevated. And we used those as a marker for how well our treatment worked because we released a new product in uh, February mm -hmm. and you saw the levels drop and they recorded how much better they were feeling inflammation of the brain can cause insomnia, yeah. migraines, uh, irritability, visual problems, uh, auditory problems, uh, amplify pain syndromes on the body. We have guys, we have one um, Marine, um, Scott, who was on methadone. And nine months, I think it was nine months after starting his program, he wakes up, he doesn't need it anymore. Wow. We've got guys who've stopped smoking cigarettes after many, many years drinking alcohol, they start sleeping much better. Uh, I had one guy, a civilian here in California, who told me, he woke up, and he said, you know, doc, I've been smoking marijuana three times a day for 35 years. I wow. woke up this morning and had no desire to smoke weed, okay? 
He wanted to go back to school and get a PhD. So, you know, benefits. We have uh, guys that could not go through uh, college, um, higher education. Um, Kevin Slyke, I can mention his name. He's in the movie uh, that my um, associate, um, Andrew Marr, Green Beret, mm -hmm. uh, ended up writing with his brother called what, Quiet Explosion. Was, was Andrew the gentleman that you were on Dave Asprey's podcast with, Bulletproof? Yes. That's okay, good. Okay. Andrew, and also on Joe Rogan and so yep. forth. Um, so, you know, his uh, his improvement, he graduated from Pepperdine and in the movie was um, Kevin Slyke who had difficulty and then gets on protocol and he ends up graduating from MIT with a master's and uh, Harvard with a master's in business at the same time wow. from not being able to do it. We've got a large growing number of our veterans uh, who are able to do this. Mm -hmm. So I guess let's take a look at that then, because I know we've kind of we've kind of talked a little bit about this problem that you can actually find it. And, and I guess looking at uh, veteran suicides, like it's it's a real problem and it's sure. I, I feel like the last number I saw, and you probably have more recent data than I do, but it was, I think it's 2017 that it was 6,100 suicides in, in 2017, um, which that's a, a very, very high number of, of our servicemen that have really put their lives on the line for us. And, you know, a lot of times they're just labeled with a psychiatric illness, they're put on a drug and they're still committing suicide. So obviously right. we're not fixing the problem. How did you right. kind of get, you know, brought into the situation to look at this differently? Um. I'm a curious kind of guy. Yeah. And when something is put in front of me that doesn't make sense, I start digging into how to make sense out of it. And that's what led me down this pathway. Also, as I said, I like reading. I still read, you know, 10, 15 articles uh, a week in areas that are across the spectrum that all focus in on the issue of mental health. Uh, I no longer believe in all the labels of mental health because we've been able to reverse uh, depression, bipolar, OCD. We have a lady who comes in from uh, Sweden with Parkinson. She's 70% better in 90 days. Wow. So, yeah. And we have, uh, these are all inflammatory illnesses. I have um, a uh, ex-Navy SEAL. He was medically boarded, medically retired because of developing multiple sclerosis while he was enlisted. Uh, 30 days on his program, he's 40% better. 60 days, he is 50% better. Mm. And this is because multiple sclerosis is an inflammatory process. If you can control the inflammation, you get to control the problem. And we use botanicals, okay? We use biological products that are nutraceutical supplements, not prescribed medication. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the literature, as I've looked at it, there are lots of science talking about things like n cysteine NAC, which Bethesda, Maryland did a couple of studies showing that in blast exposed veterans out in the theater of war, if you put them onto n cysteine and then you had a control group who weren't on it, in a week's time, the control group who weren't on the n cysteine developed depression, insomnia, irritability, and the group that was on it did mm -hmm. not. Wow. So when you start looking at these natural products and then you look at the biochemistry of how they work, you know, inflammation. I mean, there's not a single person on this planet who can honestly say, I've never had any form of uh, head trauma or mm -hmm. body trauma that translated to, you know, whipping of the head to cause the front of the brain to go forward and the back of the brain to go back and what they call a coup counter coup, where you get trauma to the frontal lobe and the occipital back of the head, which generates the chemistry that creates the inflammation. Mm or else you're under stress because you're not feeling well. We have a tendency to, you know, cortisol levels go up when you're not feeling well. And cortisol is what shuts off the fractalkin that protects the brain. So I, I guess then, then looking at that then, how are you helping to change the protocol, you know, for our military as they're coming out then? Because I, I do feel like it, it is really important because, you know, we it, it like no vet should be struggling with mental illness or homeless or something like that because they've really right. done so much for us. But a lot of them are ending up that way because they're struggling with this. So I guess, right. how are you helping to shift that paradigm? Well, I, I can only do it one person at a time. Being on shows like yours, Joe Rogan, I'll be we'll be back on Joe in January. Mm -hmm. um, being out there, having people like John, who you know the the policy. I don't know if I can talk about it, but the policy that he has relative to protecting. Uh, veterans and servicemen from the potential harmful effect of being placed on an antidepressant without being warned 
the uh, the, the consent the one. Yes. Yeah, he mentioned consent. that he mentioned in the previous interview. So, okay, so we're I cool. wasn't sure yeah. where it was in that terms, but I mean that's how John and I got together was mm -hmm. over that beautiful piece of legislation that I believe was signed. But it will mandate that our veterans in active duty, when they are offered or are put onto an antidepressant, that they're warned in writing verbally, written format and verbally, that mm -hmm. it can increase their depressive signs and increase suicide. suicide. Mm -hmm. And there's 156 suicides in the military and veteran population every month. Wow. So 156 times 12. And that's if they're being accurate. Uh, in one of the classes on the, I, a book, my third book on traumatic brain injury, a clinical approach to diagnosing and treatment in the class that I give with the book, there was a psychiatrist from the VA there. She was active, okay? And she's, when I said 22 a day, she raised her hand, stood up, introduced herself and corrected me. She said sometimes upwards of 40, okay, a day. Wow. 40 a day, but 2012, they sort of like put a crunch down on the uh, actual numbers. I don't know what's real because I haven't been able to find that. Sure. But I have to take her word because she works as a psychiatrist in the um, industry, so to speak. Yeah. So I guess then looking at it then, like, you know, you mentioned a little bit of, uh, you know, one of the one of the treatments you're doing, I guess, in terms of like protocols, like what sort of protocols are, are, are these guys going on that's actually reversing this stuff? Because uh, I just I find it so interesting because like, you know, as we talked about in the beginning, we talk about like, you know, the, the, this inflammation they're talking about in CT, they're not finding it until after the fact and it is what it is. And it kind of sounds like a, it's a death sentence, but you're talking about actually like reversing this. So I guess what sort of protocol are, are guys going on then? Well, everything is directed by their laboratory testing. Mm -hmm. OK, so uh, the guys that are here in California have a license also in uh, Florida and in the process of getting one in Texas. And that's because there's 1.8 million veterans in California, 1.6 in Texas and 1.4 in Florida. Those are the areas that I feel that what we have to offer will have the greatest impact because of the numbers. Sure. So, you know, it's it's based on the lab results and then anti-inflammation. Mm -hmm. uh, the project that we're on right now is to try to make this a really terse protocol where we give them the uh, anti-inflammatory kit called the TriPak. And they're nanolacrosomal products. There are no drugs in it. Um, and they go on to it for 90 days. At the end of every 30 days, they report back on a paper called the MPQ, Monthly Program Questionnaire, how well they're doing. And the ones who do well, we've answered the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem is purely inflammation. The ones who don't do well, will go and bring them in and get the laboratory testing due to refine what it is they're deficient in. They might be deficient in vitamin D because vitamin D, as we know, the hormone vitamin D is incredible at anti-inflammation, protecting the heart, protecting the brain, protecting the pancreas, um, there are 85,000 articles on vitamin D, D for prevention of COVID-19. I mean, it's out there. You yeah. just have to look for the literature. So we start off with a nutraceutical, non-prescribed product, which can go anywhere. So I don't, not restricted by states. Mm -hmm. So people can just order it and, and get the product. So uh, that's what we're doing now with the SEALs, with the Marines, and we've done it with uh, Green Beret Army, a lot of Army. Mm -hmm. So that's that's basically what it is. Well, I guess then, you know, looking at it, Dr. Gordon, you, you mentioned in, in the beginning that you had previously done work with the NFL. Yeah. Um, I, I guess looking at that, like, you know, with the success you're talking about, you're having, you know, with servicemen, do you see a protocol like this coming to, um, you know, retired NFL guys in the future? Like, do you see that happening? We're still doing it. I still get some NFL guys. We've got... Um, uh, baseball, basketball, football. We've got a Russian hockey player who's mm -hmm. doing phenomenally well uh, after all the fights. You know, hockey I love because it's like pugilism. It's like going to the rink and watching a fight, yeah. you know, but they're hitting the puck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. With some of these NFL guys too, though, they're so big now. Like the hits are just so much more like even than 50 years ago or 40 yeah. years ago, you know? Yeah. And, you know, taking away the uh, lateral hits, it's only a small benefit because they've got all the other ones that they should take away, which they can. Otherwise, you've got guys standing around the field looking at each other and not tackling. Mm -hmm. But um, 
all sports. We've got uh, rugby, we've got motocross, we've got um, you know all the basic ones, hockey and so forth, who come in. And the ESPN Outside the Line with James Tony uh, talking about how he was and how much better he was doing when he was on protocol. Mm -hmm. And we find that some people can go on protocol, which is a term for our treatment package or treatment protocol, mm -hmm. and they'll be on it for a while and they can stop and they're better. And then we have other people who need to be on it a little bit longer. And then other people who enjoy the quality of clarity that they get, mm -hmm. you know, and therefore they stay on it, you know. Well, are, uh, doctor, are you familiar with um, Aaron Hernandez's story at all, the former Patriots tight end? Um, I've got it someplace. I was collecting a lot of the uh, pro sports stories, and I yeah. have a in a early uh, lecture series that I had. He, I had Junior on it. I had a lot of people, Waters, everybody. Because then I, I may have to send you. Um, there was a podcast series that was done about him. If you haven't heard more about his story, because they talk about um, like he was he was convicted of murder and and, yeah. and he, he actually you know committed suicide in, in prison. Yeah. And when they studied his brain afterwards, they found that he had like some of the worst inflammation I'd ever seen. And I'm, and I'm curious with someone like that, like, you know, knowing what occurred in his life and a lot of things going on, is he someone that could have been suffering with this type of inflammation? Not could have, he was, mm. he was, I mean, one of the most common things that happens and it answers the question, why are there a million veterans in jail, incarcerated 235,000 are females? The reason is their judgment was off. What happens with frontal lobe damage, just like in Alzheimer's cases or frontal lobe dementia, mm -hmm. you cannot do things in a series or you cannot make judgment between right and wrong. So one of my long-term, or I should say short-term now at my age, but one of my goals is to be able to go into one of the um, military prisons and to um, put them on a protocol. We know from studies out of... Um, uh, what is it called? It's not incarceration. There's a journal that looks at the health of people that are incarcerated. And what they came back with is they said that almost 100% of the veterans who had been arrested and incarcerated had a history of traumatic brain injury. Wow. Okay. Now, for clarification, not all we monitor on our patient population where their injuries happen. And a lot of our military guys, I mean, thinking about all, I take care of special ops mostly. These guys are, you know, revved up. Mm -hmm. You look at their history. They were MMA. They were Brazilian jiu-jitsu. They were like my, my associate, Andrew Marr, was from Pop Warner all the way up to college football. Yeah. You know, up to college playing football. And he left college because of 9-11. That's why he went into the Army and became Green Beret and became a EOD explosives expert, a breacher. And he was exposed to little subconcussive traumas, not the major ones. And that's one of the things I have a difference with the VA and the DOD and the community as a whole is that you don't need to be knocked down in order to develop the, ex the exact same chemical changes in the brain as having been knocked down. In a study on uh, people who had, were knocked unconscious, 85% of them, if not more, had no findings on MRI or CT scan, but they had personality problems mm. or developed. That's not structural. That's not structural damage. That's biochemical, molecular chemistry, the inflammatory processing. We can't see the inflammation. We can't see inflammation, but we can actually see the effect of the inflammation on the personality of the person. Do you, do you find um, even even beyond just um, like brain injury, like do you find also that there's dietary contributing it to as well? Because Absolutely. like American diet is so highly inflammatory in, in comparison to like even Europe. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, in my practice, my I have three daughters, two are doctors. One, Allison uh, Gordon works with me. Um, mm -hmm. She specializes in gut brain. Yeah. So she's the one that looks at the nutritional aspect. We look at because as I know, Dr. Gundry, um, I had on the show last year, he even said that fixing the gut is kind of the, the, the secret to longevity. Yes, it, taking all things being equal, absolutely. Because what happens is, uh, Caleb Finch from USC, where I used to be, wrote a incredible book on um, neuroendocrinology of the brain, which is the area that I work in. If mm -hmm. you disrupt the neuroendocrinology of the brain, you die. 
Wow. The gut inflammation, dysbiosis, um, antibiotics, certain medications will lead to leakage of the gut and create inflammation in the brain. Cytokine storm in the gut gets into the blood and right into the brain. And when it gets into the brain, it turns on the brain's production of cytokines. So you've got peripheral below the neck production going into the brain and then the brain. And that creates what's called a chronic state. And they found that chronic state can last for 17 years and longer before anyone has symptoms. So you could have had a head trauma 15 years ago, but today you're developing depression. Mm -hmm. No one's going to ask the question and say, Jeremy, have you ever had a head trauma throughout your life? Oh, let me tell you, I've had some head traumas, man. (laughs) That's it. We all have had head trauma. Yeah. We just don't recognize it as being quote unquote head trauma because we've been We've been not brainwashed. We've been told that only significant head trauma is if you're knocked unconscious. Not the case. My closing kind of analogy is you can either have 10 dimes or $1. They both are 100 cents. They both equal 100. Mm-hmm. But you can have 10 small ones or else one large one. Well, I, I guess then looking at it, Dr. Gordon, like, you know, we've covered a lot of stuff today. And if you could kind of, I guess, look at the legacy you want to create with what you're doing. I guess, what kind of change or what kind of legacy do you want to create with the work you're doing? Well, I, obviously, I'd like to have the, the DOD and the VA accept what I'm doing, looking at the 3,000 people, looking at the two, 370 uh, military guys and how well they're doing. Look at that and uh, incorporate this as an option into treatment protocol. And it's so inexpensive relative to what they pay for TBI and for PTSD that it makes sense Mm -hmm. to do this, okay? Uh, Andrew and I were very honored. We uh, went for a three-day bike ride excursion with uh, number 43, President Bush. And uh, we were sitting there telling him that the CBO, which is the Congressional Budget Office, puts aside about $16,000 per veteran for their medical care per year. Mm -hmm. And we said to him, look, it, give us $16,000 per person that lasts three years. And hopefully at the end of three years, they're finished with everything that they need to do. That's three years for everything included that we need for our protocol. When that would even like, you got to think that would cut future VA costs as well, because you're not going to be continually treating these things that aren't fixing. Correct. Also, um, my discussion this morning was about the attrition that occurs in the special forces. And you've got someone that the government has invested two, three, four million dollars into training them. They get one head trauma that puts them out of commission. Now you've got, you've lost the four million dollars you've invested. You've lost the, um, the experience that the person has uh, developed and the relationships they've you know, created amongst their team members and so forth. And it's gone. How about this? How about early intervention with our protocol, which is so easy to do, and you keep them active, mm. you to decrease attrition so that you keep these experts in their field in the field. That's the goal. Well, I, I just got to say, I'm, I'm so excited about like what we've talked about today, because I just I do feel like so many people are diagnosed with a mental illness when it's like we just fix the body and fix the brain like you know, people are going to be in a lot better shape and we're not going to have a lot of these problems. So I, I really appreciate, you know, that viewpoint today. Dr. Gordon, for people hearing this that are, you know, excited about what you're doing, they, they want to either check you out or get more involved in your mission and what you're doing. How would people right. do that? Well, I have an educational site, which is at tbihelpnow.org, O-R-G, okay? And um, what I've been able to do is I have a pharmacist license and what I do is develop products. And the products I develop are used to self-fund us so that we can help our veterans. And that's what we've done with all these uh, veterans, also with Coast Guard, Air National Guard, National Guard, uh, Secret Service, FBI, anyone who's in uh, a government position trying to keep us safe. Uh, I don't know about sane, but keep us safe. Uh, uh, We'll extend a hand to try and help and make it easier um, for them to enter the program. But uh, the uh, tbihelpnow.org is the best place. There's a lot of great information there, some articles, key articles 
Don't listen to me, read the articles. Don't listen to me, listen to the men and women who have come through our program and what they have to say. That's the key. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Gordon, like you're, you're, you're brilliant. I've really, really enjoyed this interview. Uh, thank you so much for spending some time with me today on the Create Your Own uh, Life my Show. My pleasure. Just anytime you need it.